Nat 20. Hello everyone, welcome back to Nat 20, uh, Tyranny on the Horizon, Part 4. <clears throat> Last we left off, our heroes uh, barely managed to escape the grasp of Bane as he stood, ready about to attack uh, Bork and Aegis as they tried to flee but couldn't. And in turn, Bork dimension doored out of there back into the uh, bookstore in which they managed to be safe and hide again. Um, they eventually attempted reading the Three Books of Pain, which they discovered that the Soul uh, Book of Pain is a demonic spellbook designed to corrupt and control uh, their enemies. Uh, the heroes then rested until night uh, in order to attend the execution of Quinn Cloud Fang, who, uh, upon approach to the city courtyard, they found that there was a second Quinn hiding behind the king that it seemed no one could see but the heroes uh, before they could reach him in time as uh, uh, Arden, Arden, uh, yeah. Yeah, Arden sorry, used late. far step to get within the king's reach. It was too late as he began being stabbed in the back. Uh, the second Quinn, who was a fake, dispersed after flashing fiery red eyes symbolizing the eyes of Bane. And fell into Arden's arms. I don't know why I'm having trouble with so that. Name. Arden's arms, yeah. Uh, in terms, Bork then tried to cast a healing spell, which did not work. So in turn... I cast a spell magic on it. That's right, you I cast did. a spell yeah. magic, which did not work. <clears throat> so in turn, you took out your stone of transmutation, right? Yep. And uh, what'd you cast? Uh, well, it's some. It's been. It's my ability called Master Transmuter. So I just use my uh, trans transmuter stone and take all of the energy and like take all of it in a single burst. And I have these things I can do with it. Right. Yeah. And yes, which he yeah, used yeah, it yeah. to repair the king's uh, dying body. And in fact, it worked. The king came back to life. Uh, you your stone back though, right? You know? No, it like gets destroyed. So I have to spend another eight hours to make a new one. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, it's not gone forever, right? No, because that could come in handy. Uh, and then after doing so, the heroes, uh, well, specifically Arden, went to lop off Quinn's head as he maniacally laughed back at him, uh, finding out that he was truly dead. Yeah, that guy's a dick. Then a uh, wizard whose name was not found out yet. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should have yeah. asked. Ran towards the courtyard, but before the players saw a dragon heading towards the wall, in which an arcane shield was placed and domed around the city. What color dragon was it? Uh, you didn't see it. It was pretty far in the distance oh. being nighttime. But you know it to be a dragon. It was very much shaped like one. It's the plus the sound. God of Tyranny. 20 bucks says the blue one. <laughs> um, Those are assholes. And as the dragon collided with the shield, falling and descending to the ground, uh, the mage man, uh, who's, a, who's an ASMR, ran up and spoke to the players and the king, stating how uh, they need the players to... Uh, the players then stepped up and in turn said how they would wish to help. So the mage said that they need to go to Giant's Rest in order to obtain a bracelet that's beneath the sleeping giant and bring it back and not dilly-dally or mess with anything that they see or uh, hear uh, beyond the walls. Uh, the players then raced, went to the gate, picked up some horses, uh, where um, Arden managed to get a nice silk black horse. Uh, Aegis got a nice uh, clunky and strong uh, white and gray horse. Uh, just to barely support his weight of 400 pounds. And <laughs> Borknork uh, got himself a little pony because he doesn't know how to ride a horse and he couldn't manage to handle it. Nerd. He'll take a pony. So that is where... Oh, and then Arden took an extra horse going back for Matthias, uh, told him that he needs to go with them now. Uh, Matthias complied and went. And they all approached the gate. The gate opened up. And the adventure continues here. So, the setting. It's nighttime. There's still artillery fire, arcane power that it hits the shield above you. Uh, in front of you is just uh, dead trees that 
and some of them are lobbed over, branches sunken down. Um, some of the branches have seemed to be curly now. The ground itself is patches of dirt and dead grass. Uh, it's very wide open. It's mostly field work here with trees here and there. And you see off to the right of you, to the north uh, west, is the massive hill that you see, although the grass is dead on it as well. Uh, the moonlight casts a shadow over the land. Uh, Arvin would like to talk about his dream, yeah. See if it means anything. Like, why would, uh, yeah. Why would he, uh, why would he come to me? Why would he be in my life? What is he dream? <laughs> what? What is he dream? <sighs> when you're asleep, and you see things in your mind, but only in your mind. Are you deranged? No. <laughs> It's a thing that all living things do with, like... Sorry, you're uh, dead inside. <laughs> all, uh, most beings with living tissue and living organs and, and a soul. stuff like that. Souls probably would help, too. And a brain. You don't have to point it out. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, he's in my head, and I don't know why. Uh, because you, you were the one who... Confronted him, uh, him about this, so that could be why. Well, I guess confronted. I like with the hand. The hand, and also from confronting that construct. Well, I had. Oh, I get that. Yeah. Thing. Oh, maybe. But apart from that, I'm not really sure. I don't think it was a booty call. <laughs> That's for sure. Do I roll like an insight or history check about like dreams of like? Pain and stuff like that. <laughs> Why it would specifically be for him? Yeah, you can roll history, see if you can recall any of the books you read. 23. 23. Uh, you look back through all the, the, in your mind, of all the books and knowledge you've obtained. You remember reading a specific paragraph back at the bookstore when you were reading through uh, various books, one of which. Um, Partain to the fact that when Bane wants someone dead, he tends to mark them so he knows their location. Uh, and it tends to begin with uh, a haunting dream. Yes. I'll relay this info. <sighs> so you may be marked. My life just continuously gets worse and worse. First a trip to the fucking free Bay Wild, almost killed by plant monsters evil celestial beings finally make it back and now I'm wanted by a fucking god <laughs> you see he's just starting to have a really hard time all of a sudden and he's just like leaning down and head in his hands and he says nothing you can do about it once Spain is dead it'll be gone we just won't let him kill me I guess as you guys be on the safe side though why don't you ride like 20 feet <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> As the three of you travel in courses to the hill that like gets closer and closer slowly, um, you hear various like wisps of the wind, and in the trees and the hills, you swear, in the, the plains, you see uh, shadows, and different figures moving and waving through the wind around them. Uh, farther out, you see a hulking, a couple of hulking figures with their fists using as legs, and they're walking like uh, gorillas uh, across the, the ground, stomping and stomping. You should probably avoid that. As you continue to crop, you see off uh, to the left of you, uh, 30 feet ahead, uh, a figure who is huddled down uh, in a hunchback position, and you can see that you can see his spine, you see that his, his skin is sucked, uh, suctioned to his ribs. Uh, you can hear light uh, moaning. That's the sermon. I feel like it could be a trap. Run or risk it. I feel like it is a trap. I'll just ride past. While well, I have my uh, hand on my hat, have the hand axe ready to put, whip it at him. Okay. I also walk past. I'm not going near that. Thing. I will go closer. You'll go closer. Yeah. All right, so as you two... I, I see, and I turn back, and I'm like, ah, of course, and I jump off the horse. <laughs> All right, you ride your pony closer. And when I'm starting to get closer, I get off the pony and walk. Okay, you get about uh, within 10 feet, and you dismount off your pony. 
Arda, and you follow behind. Yeah. Uh, Aegis. From a safe you distance. Still, <laughs> I'll just stop once I see that they're both approaching. Uh, you just stop like, and watch. Yeah. 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 I like how it's Mage Armor. Okay. I tell yeah. Matthias to stay back. A nice gleam of energy. Uh, Matthias does stay back. He yeah, stay, stay there. <laughs> he doesn't bother moving. Who knows what this is? <clears throat> As you approach, uh, the moaning gets louder. My friend, is there anything I can help with? Looks like you should just put him out of his misery. The moaning stops. Or not. Didn't mean <laughs> it. watches the figure <laughs> extends his arm. It's just a long claw with barbs on the end of it. Oh, it's a long claw. Shings it into the ground. His other arm does the same. Shings it into the ground. He stands up. Oh, very skinny claw. and tall. It's a bone claw. Probably recognize this being. It's a bone claw. claw. It's a bone yeah. claw. God damn it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Should just rode past. <laughs> we still can go away. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> and it begins to turn around and look at you and you see it's kind of mangled face, uh, decrepit skin hanging off of his skull. I step back slowly. As soon as I realize it's a bone claw, I'm working my hand axe. What? <laughs> I turned. No! What? No! Hold the hip. Ah, shit. Yeah. Looks like it. We, we can still run. We can take it. I just, yeah. It's going straight to his PC. Where? What's your role? Where did I find the phone call? Not too bad. Plus 10. Phone call Plus might three. be in more times. <laughs> in what? More than times. Right? Yeah, it is. Here, let me grab the book. Oh, no, that's the same. Right here. Oh, no, uh, more than times. Oh, I see. <sighs> so you went behind next, where'd you get the hit? 22. 22. Uh, yeah, you huck that haddix and it whizzes past you guys and makes contact right in the, well, the forehead of the creature. And as it does so, it rips off the back, ripping skin with it and flailing behind it. And the creature knocks back, but then catches itself as it puts its hands behind it and uses the claws to jab into the ground to keep itself stable and pushes itself back up. Looks like we're fighting. I'll have everyone roll initiative. <laughs> Looks like you're fighting. <laughs> Oh yeah, I should have rolled damage for that. Yeah, roll damage for that. 16. 11. Okay. So, since I only had one weapon in my hand, do I add the bonus for my duo and fighting style? Yeah, because you only have one weapon in your hand. So that's an 8 damage. 8 damage? Plus my strength would be 13. Nice. 13 damage done. I'm still on my horse. All right, so what was everyone's initiative like? 11. 11? 16. 16. 9. 9. So, yours was 11, you said? Yeah. We didn't hear Bane speak for very long, did we? No, we just heard very few words. Okay. So, like, less than a minute? Yeah, definitely less than a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Um, all right, with that, Arden, I'm first, you're first. Okay, well. This sucks. I'm going to. I'm going to reach into my component pouch. Uh, and uh, like how far away is he from me? He's about. 10 feet away from me? Only 10 feet? Okay, I'm gonna back up so I'm about. Well, he got within 10 feet of the creature. I'll say you'd be about 15 feet behind. Okay, well, I'm backing up so he's 30 feet away. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull up a miniature hand from my component rush, like a clay hand. I'm gonna crush it in my hand, and I'm gonna cast Maximilian's Earth and Grass. Uh, so I choose a five foot square. Uh, I'm gonna do the five foot square around the bone claw. Uh, a medium hand from compacted soil rises there and reaches for one creature you can see within five feet of it. Target must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, target make, takes 2d6 bludgeoning and is restrained for the spell's duration, which is up to one minute. Uh, so he has to make a strength saving throw, and he has to beat my save DC, which is 18. Ooh, okay. But yeah, so basically the ground, like, just beside him, erupts, and, like, <laughs> a hand comes out, and, like, does, like, a like a lunging motion, and it just, like, reaches out to grab around him. And he got a total of six. <laughs> oh, wow, really? Okay, yeah. So he takes two, six, blood, three, seven damage. Seven damage. And he's damage. restrained for up to one minute. So, uh, to break out the restraint target, you can make a strength check against your spell save DC. So it has to keep trying to get out. Oh, 
Okay. And it is concentration, so I can't use a different spell, but he is restrained. Which right. gives everyone an advantage on attacks, right? So, it does, yeah. So as you create this earthly hand to reach around and grab the bone claw, it secures him in place, but there's squeezing, and you can hear the bones cracking. And effectively restraining him. Uh, is there anything you'd else you like to do? Bonus action. Uh, your bonus action, your communication. Uh, I just, I turn to everyone and I say, hit him now while you can. Okay. Uh, it's now Bone Claw's turn. But he's effectively restrained. So he's got to make a save, correct? Uh, yeah, it is his turn. Yeah, so he has to beat my 18 against his strength check again. Alright, let's see this. Six. He got the same as so last time. He's still restrained. He's yeah. still restrained. Um, that is effectively the bone claw's turn as he tries to squeeze his way out of the hand and nothing happens. And you hear a couple more crackling bone. Uh, you see a spine kind of pop out through the dirt. Uh, nice. It is now Bork Mark's turn. <laughs> You're at 10 feet across from him and he's restrained. How, like, health wise, how he's looking, like, not damaged at all, right? He's looking yeah. normal, he still looks the same. Okay. Uh. I'll cast Conjure Elemental. I'll conjure a Earth Elemental. Okay. So? The action, you begin to take your hands, put them on the ground, and start waving them back and forth, and you see the oh, dirt. Wait. Takes one minute, so I won't do that. Oh, I'll okay. cast Fireball. Oh, okay. <laughs> no one's in the area with them, right? Uh, what's, no. What's the thing you need? Uh, fireball is... 20 foot cube. Yeah. Uh, 20 foot radius sphere. Well, okay, you're, yeah. you're in the way of them. You're in the 20 foot yeah, sphere. Yeah, I'm 30 feet away. Okay, so I will run 30 feet and then use my aggressive to move extra speed. I think it's just an extra 30 feet okay. to our thing. So you're going to go 60 feet in total? Yeah, and then I'll cast Fireball on him. So you now approach um, Aegis's area, kind of where he's on his horse, and you cast Fireball, roll to hit. Do it, I dare you. Doesn't you just have to do a saving throw? Yeah, it, does, it? it has to do a next saving throw. Oh, okay. It's speed 17. It's to be 17. It, oh, since it's uh, grappled, I think it automatically fails. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. I think so. It's no, it has disadvantage. Oh. Okay. It has disadvantage on uh, saving throws when you're restrained. So that's a total of 14. Yeah, that fails. <laughs> Ice. Roll that damage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 24. Flashbacks to the arcane of all. <laughs> Alright, so as you sway your hands around in the spherical area, you conjure up a fireball and then you blast it outwards and it hurls its way towards the bone cliff, effectively smacking you straight in the face. Uh, some of the dirt kind of flies off from the hand, but regrows in the bottom up. Uh, the creature who's then face is just pure skull now. There's no skin left on it. It's charred up. And it just uh, peels its head back. Anything for bonus? No, I used my bonus action. Okay, communication. What do you want to say? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. It's your turn, Aegis. How far away am I from him? Uh, you're about 65 feet away. Okay. So... My horse has its own, uh... Has its own speed and hit points and stuff. Yeah. Nice. So, if I move on the horse, that's the horse's action and not mine? Yeah. Okay. So well, that's the horse for movement. That still uses your... You can't get off and then move again. Yeah. So if you move you're effectively, horse, when you're on a horse, you use the horse's you movement as yours. But I'm saying if I dash on the horse... Oh yeah, you use the horse's speed to move. Right. Yeah, but it wouldn't be towards my action, so I can still attack. Yeah, you can action. still attack if you're moving with the horse. Okay. Because I'm going to have him dash up to the bone claw. Bone claw. I thought bone devil for some reason. Up to the bone claw, and I'm going to use my triple attack to attack him three times with my longsword as I'm there. 
and then with, with the remaining wow. uh, movement speed, I'll kind of start riding away. Because uh, you're going to kind of go in like a circle. Yeah, around. do a little circle, do okay. tap a few times, and then run off for another charge. Roll a hit with advantage for your three attacks. First one is a 28. That hits. Second one's a 19. That also hits. Third one will be either a dirty 20 to 14. I would just roll that one. Oh, your dirty 20 hits. That does not hit. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all your taxes. Hit. Roll your damn oge. Oh, there it is. So, 11 plus 2 is 13. 13 plus 2 is 15. 9 plus 2 is 11. So, 26. Add 13 is 39 damage. Well, oh. 39. And then that's a half because he's resistant. I should have done that last time you threw your axe, but I forgot. So, so he only takes 19 of that damage. Um, I said that's pretty good still. That's still pretty good, yeah. So, <clears throat> as you go at a galloping speed with your horse and race towards the bone claw and you approach him, uh, doing a nice half circle turn. You slash him once, slash him again on the back, and once again across the neck. His head just kind of falls off to the side as you gallop back to your position. Um, you watch as he just uh, kind of takes his shoulder and pushes his head back up into place. And then goes, ah! He screeches back more. Cool. It's your turn again, Arden. Oh, I don't want to lose concentration. So, as an action, you cause the head to crush your strength target. We must make a strength save. So, you make a strength save, so we're taking another 2d6 bludgeoning damage. Or right. 18. You do the strength save. That's a, a 10. 10? So, he takes the full 9 damage. Alright, that's bludgeoning damage? Bludgeoning, yeah. Yeah, so he takes half of that then. Uh, I turn and I say, it's not working as well as I thought. I like the spell. Do something else. I'm useless right now. So you watch keep him restrained. I guess so, but he's not doing anything. Okay, that's, fine. I, that's useful. Uh, okay, okay. Crowd control. You don't have to do damage. All right, that's right. what you're, you're here for. All right, I'll hold on to it then. See, as the hand squeezes, you hear the cracking more and more. You can see bone kind of pierce through the dirt. Uh, effectively, is there anything else you like to do? Movement bonus. Uh, what can I do for? Oh. Uh, no, that he's just that he's staying on her. So, All right. Yeah, no, I, I, that, that's in my turn. Yeah, I, there's not much I can do, so I'll just maintain a safe distance. It's Bone Claw's turn, and he's gonna go. Argh! He's gonna try and break out of your hand. Try saving. <laughs> Eleven. Oh, <I> can <laughs> he this, he's rolling like garbage. Um, effectively, it does not work. Nice. As he tries to break through. You see his kind of talons are piercing through, but the dirt quickly pushes him back in. Uh, it's Sporknork's turn. Uh, yeah. Now currently 60 feet away. How badly injured is he looking? Like He's looking a little more beat up now. You know, his face is completely yeah. charred. Only you can't see a lot of his body, but you see ribs poking out the dirt. Okay. Uh, is that... Are you like great next to him still? I would be. Are you? Well, it depends which horse I would be riding. So, if War Horse has a 60 foot movement speed, and then the other horses have. The other horses have. The draft horse has 40, and a riding horse has 60. So, it depends on which horse you gave me. What's the heavier one? You have a riding horse. So a riding horse can carry 480 pounds, yeah. draft horse can carry 540, and a war horse can carry 540. Then riding horse can move 60, draft can move 40, and war horse can move 60. So I'd have a riding horse. You have a riding horse? I have a riding horse. So I'd, I'd be like 40 feet away from him? Uh, yeah. No, I would be like... No, when? Because you're... I'd be close to 60, yeah. Yeah, you're still back basically where you were. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, you should feel like you're in line with Borknor. I'll cast Fireball at Bork level. Okay! Damn. <laughs> he will make his save with disadvantage. The only other attack I have is the Quarter Staff for Dagger. So. Oh, that's fine. I love it. Wow, that's just wow. nice. Oh, uh, that's an. Well, I haven't taken the low one, so. Six. <laughs> that's a nine! Damn. <laughs> Uh, poor Bone This dude is scary out. too. You can't yeah, do terrifying. anything. Thank God for Max Mulan's <laughs> <laughs> grass yeah. and fireball. Oh, that's three a lot sixes. of sixes. What sort of damage are we looking at? Same. So he's resistant to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Uh, 36 damage. Okay. Yeah. Um, as you once again swirl your hands in a circular motion and conjure up a slightly bigger fireball, and even slightly hotter as well, you then hurl it, uh, you give it a nice flick of the wrist as you hurl it towards the bone claw, effectively hits him dead in the face again, um, and you watch as his head peels back, but the fire, instead of seeming to explode off, it kind of explodes downwards through his body, and you see bones fly out from the dirt in all sorts of directions, rib bones and such. At this point, you see these kind of slanted in the hand. All right, any movement, bonus, or otherwise? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that's much all I'll do. Sure. Um, in that case, I just I'll do my little charge again. Okay. Three attacks. And 19. So, 16, 19, what was the first one? 29. Oh, yeah, they all hit. <laughs> 29. 29. 29. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> so, 12 plus 11. 10. 12 plus 10 plus 9. No, 8. 12 plus 10 plus 8. So 20. 20. Uh, half to 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as you just finished doing your first round and you uh, pull on the reins and turn your horse back around for another run, uh, you dash forward and having a weapon ready, you go for more slings, more towards precise of the neck cuts to try and get the skull off. And... Um, Doing so, you take your first slash and you cut one side of the neck. As you go around through the back, you cut again. And you cut for the next uh, final attempt on the other side of the neck. And effectively, the skull just droops forward and slides and face plants into the dirt. As you uh, finish walking your... <laughs> dashing your horse back to place. <laughs> and my words are not catching up. No, I'm just on, at a brace. little trot. And doing so, uh, you watch as the head just is still sunk in there. But you be, see the town still trying to push out through the dirt. Okay. Creatures still alive. Um, uh, any bonus or uh, movement otherwise? Nope. No. All right. I then. will not race anything right now. I heard it. Well, uh, they asked me to keep holding it, so I'm going to keep holding my moves in the grass. So I'm just going to do another. I'm going to use my action to squeeze them again. And you see, like, the fingers are tight. Real tight. That's, uh... 20. 20? 30, 30, okay. 20. So he takes half as much damage. Okay. He doesn't break free, I just just he's squeezing. <laughs> okay. So... That's 7. So he's about down to 6 or 3 damage. Okay. Uh... This is probably the most boring fight I've ever been a part of, you guys. <laughs> as the hand squeezes even more, you watch as the bones begin to pierce through more, and some of them are starting to chip off and fall down. Uh, the creature's head still f- is getting sunken into the head, and it's just pulling more and more downwards towards his chest. Eventually, he's looking at his chest now. Uh, and it's his turn, and he's going to try and escape. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, he had 12, 30, 40, 15. Oh, sorry. It's 18. 
<laughs> Looks like you're going to be hanging out with us for a little longer there, buddy. Ah, uh, Bork Nork. <laughs> Your turn. Just a quick question. Would he be attuned with his screen? Yeah. That's a good question, yeah. I, uh, forgot, I forgot you were doing that upstairs. Yeah, um, uh, we can talk about that after, though. We'll, uh, how many rounds has it been? Like, Because it only lasts for a minute, so he only has ten rounds. Only has been ten rounds? It's not been no. ten rounds. It's like the third round. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, just making sure. Yeah. No, it's only in the third round. He's still got we'll have to keep to track of that, because if he really does fail every time, then after ten rounds, he's free. If he's alive. No, he's still in the third round. Yeah. And I forgot about Ring, thank you. Yeah, I think I, I should be by now, I think. Yeah. Unless it takes like a three-day attunement thing. Uh, I don't want to keep wait using spell slots just because we can rest afterwards. We've kill this thing. We've got a like giant. We might have to deal with. We can do a short rest afterwards. But right now, I oh, I can't take. You might not think it's hard right now, but that's only because Maximilian's earth and grass. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> don't mess around with this thing. You're you're away from him, right? Yeah, sixty feet away. Got it. Fire blood worth nothing. Holy, 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 okay. Has time for him to make his, you know, deck save with disadvantage. They're totally going to make because he's made anyone so far. Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> That's nine. You can yeah, do it, Boneclaw. <laughs> he's not rolling anything like above 12. Except for that one twenty that he won. What sort of damage are we looking at? Max damage. 29. 29. Effectively, you then swirl your hands once more, creating an even bigger and hotter fireball, and you, this time, you lob it over, and it arches, and boom, smacks him right on the head, and at this time, it drapes down his whole body, and the head just falls off through the dirt and just gets stuck in the hand as the hand absorbs the head. And then you begin to see that the entire bone structure of this beast goes up in green flames and disintegrates. Yes. Awesome. The bone claw is dead. You hear nice screech as well. Screech. As it goes up in flames. I wish I had a nice quip for this. But I, I was mad. This creature could do so much <laughs> and it didn't get to do a single damn <laughs> nope. thing. That's what you get. Stupid bone claw. Oh, damn, that was, that was nice. Okay. It's like the ball of Yeah. So, so it disintegrated, <laughs> right? It disintegrated, yeah. I, I have nice green flames. Earth and grass turn to a fist and angle down and then twist and turn to face you. Uh, face you, Bork. And I say, good job. Fist bump. <laughs> fist bump. <laughs> yeah. And then the hand just crumbles back in the mud and like falls to the ground. Just, <sighs> yeah. Oh, and to think, I only had to use one spell slot. <laughs> Effectively, now the beast is dead. You continue on your journey. Uh, you can continue on it now. The place has gone quiet again, although you can hear faint screams and stuff when you're coming from in the distance. And you still see those creatures in the distance as well that are walking like gorillas, slamming their fists on the ground with each movement. And then they arrest you, said, right? Eventually, I'm good right now. I just didn't know how much more we'd have to attack them. Right. I should be fine for the next while. Let's carry on. Avoid those gorilla things. All right, you mount back up and you continue on a path to the hill. Uh, at this point, you're about halfway there, so you have about 30 minutes left of riding before you reach it. Um, you journey farther and farther until uh, about five minutes after your halfway point, you hear Shredder! Mm hmm. I haven't heard that name in a long time. Shredder? What? You hear the word Shredder scream like a battle cry almost. Is it like a similar voice to Bane's that we've heard before? No? no. I'm trying to look for the source of the voice. And as you look around, uh, you see nothing. I'll continue on, but more cautiously this time. I'll use the attack magic. All right, uh, you cast detect magic. What are you gonna do? Detect magic from everywhere, all sorts of places. There's so many focuses, and it's just exploding all around you, but you don't know where it's coming from. It's coming from all directions, everywhere. Who's well, Shredder? I am Shredder. Since when were you called Shredder? It's in my past. Doesn't seem like it's in your past. 
back from the war. I did some cruel acts. Stuff that's better left behind. I actually sympathize very, very much with this. You yeah. walk, you were interrupted, and you hear, Oh, Shredder. We hear that he was over. Yeah, you all yeah. hear it. Yeah. Uh, can I do a perception check? See where it's coming from? Yeah. No, you all, yeah, you can all do perception checks. Uh, is, is two right there? Yeah, 18, 17, 13. 18, 17, 13. All right. Um, yeah, collectively, you all hear that it seems to be coming from further away from the city, almost into the foresty region. And you hear it from that direction. Is it like the way we're going? Or? No, it's to the foresty region, basically beside the hill area. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's more to the north, uh, or no, west, west region. Like I, look, west. I look at uh, Aegis and <clears> say, <throat> do we need to make a pit stop? Possibly. It's very intriguing. Not many people would know that name. Who would? Pretty much anyone over 200 that was involved in the wars. Doesn't really narrow it down when you're surrounded by dwarves and elves. That's the war on a different plane, though, right? Yeah. Oh, that definitely narrows it down. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, you just hear the winds blowing past you. We have a job to do in collecting this bracelet. That is on the time crunch. This can wait. All right, then let's keep going at our giant's rest. All right, you guys continue to travel forward. Um, eventually, about 20 minutes later, you begin to approach the hill, and it's a lot bigger than you originally thought. Although from a distance, it looked like a normal, big-sized hill. This one is quite gargantuan-sized, and it... The angle you're looking at it from, it looks like there's legs and then it angles up to a stomach downwards back to uh, level ground. And you swear that you can barely hear like uh, a gust of wind coming through the hill itself. It's the giant snoring. Do you have any idea like how do you get below? You don't have a clue how to get because we just heard that there was like a locked up door with dragons and crazy stuff. Yeah. In the cave system. I could uh enter the hill, you don't know where to go. I can use Mold Earth, start digging a hole. Go and tunnel. wake the dra- wake the giant. I didn't say we go through the giant, we tunnel down underneath and back up. Too risky. We should uh find the actual entrance. Yeah, I guess just explore until we find an entrance. All right, quick pause. As you guys go to explore around the hill, um, you go to about the most west side of the hill uh, to where it slopes downwards, merging with the ground. And you see um, there's a patch of grass that seems still green, whereas the rest of it is dead. In the shape of a, about a 10 foot circle. Looks <clears throat> promising. And I would probably still have detect magic because it's 10 minutes. Oh, okay. I still don't detect anything. It's just, it, it's like messing with your okay. radar. It seems yeah. like it's coming from everywhere, exploding in all directions. Okay. Nothing like, specifically like door like or anything? No. no not at all. <laughs> I'm going to speak prayer, I think. Melon. Uh, it opens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I approach the, the green right area and I, uh, I look down at my hand. I look back at everyone else. I'm like, wish me luck. And I touch the grass. All right, you touch the grass, and uh, it just wobbles and fades. It's fake. It's fake grass. <laughs> and it leads into a tunnel that seems to go straight into the hill. I push through. Yeah, Not tall enough for you to stand, and then you would have to crawl. As okay. he's done it, Andrew, I'll kind of grab him and I'm like, me first. <laughs> Last thing we need is you to plug up the hole, you badass. <laughs> and I go in first. <laughs> As you go in, you once again hear Shredder. Oh, you now I know why you wanted to go in first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't distract us neither. Do you? Uh, I have uh, coming here from behind you. Can, uh, I believe familiars can see for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. I look through uh, quickly. Look through eyes, and I 
I can just stay my other crawl in. I look through his eyes. I'm like, fine, we're going to play it safe. But they might go first. All right, he crawls up and through the tunnel. And Scamper, like, as you see, it's time. just a dirt tunnel mostly. And he gets about 40 feet-ish in until it leads to a drop where a rope ladder leads downwards. All right. So basically, it goes straight ahead. There's a ladder. Yeah. You climb down. Okay, I call the ladder back. I'm scuttling backwards. And as you turn and look around, you see off in the distance in the tree line a shadowy figure. Uh, staring at you, or looking in your direction. I get the feeling. And it's shaped a, of a human warrior that wearing similar armor to what you battled once a long time ago. I get the feeling we're not allowed to put this off. <laughs> you here, save me. <laughs> I save me. Is it like the same voice from the book? Do I see these two like? Hearing voices now? Well, you hear the Shredder thing. You all hear Shredder. Yeah. You, he's the one with the person. voice in his head. Oh, well, I announced that I just heard the voice again from the book. All right. We best get inside. There's more important matters on, on our hands. I agree. Are you I'm, avoiding something? I'll mount back up and I'll charge into the tree lines. Wait, what? Straight up, guy. You get you on your riding it. horse. Like, you watch. Like, so, like, we have magic to do. As Anos. As Anos. Or not. Aegis. 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 <laughs> charges into the tree line on his riding horse. Uh, as you get closer and closer, you see the shadow figure seems to be pushing back into the trees. I won't go. Don't let him lead you into a trap. I won't enter the forest. I'll stop at the, at the tree line. As you stop at the tree line, you yank your horse back. And, uh, and he lands uh, his front hooves back on the ground. Uh, you hear nothing but uh, what sounds like whispering. Like, hi, 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 do we need to do this? Fuck this place. I'll take a torch out of my Dungeoneer's pack and light the forest on fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you take a torch and you throw it into the forest. Uh, and it lands uh, right beside a tree that in fact begins to smolder. And, but it doesn't seem like it, it's catching a thing. I walk up and uh, and then quickly guess. the winds blast the flame out. I look at him. I say, "We're burning it down." It's better see if it's sorry. I cast create bonfire. Throws a five foot cube. Any creature in the bonfire space where you cast spell must succeed a dex saving throw. What's Creep? the range on that? Uh, sixty feet. Yeah, spells damage increases by one d eight when you reach fifty fifth eleven. 17, so it does 3d8 fire damage. And it's a giant bonfire, a 5 foot by 5 foot bonfire. And I cast it directly beside that tree. Alright, as you approach within 60 feet of that tree, you cast bonfire, and the fire begins to roar up into the higher parts of the trees, but then quickly you begin to hear and you all see this gust of wind that seems to be going from inside the forest outwards. Uh, you can see leaves and such that are just mangling all in it. Like it's sucking into the forest? Or? It's sucking oh. outwards towards you guys. And oh. as it passes through the fire, it blows it completely out. And as it passes through the tree line, you all get hit with a gust of wind. That's pissed me off. <laughs> and after that, you begin to see massive vines that seem to be mangling through the trees further in. We should go back to the mountain or the hill. I'm going to be honest, we're not going that fucking forest. <laughs> Fuck this part. <laughs> yeah. And I'll turn back towards the hill. I also I turn keep around. an eye on the forest as I'm running away. Uh, so, as you keep an eye running away, you I turn around to leave too, yeah. As you all keep an eye running away, you see that shadowy figure begin to push backwards to the tree line. I whip around and I throw an ice knife at it. Okay. A sixty foot range. It's just an action. Uh, so yeah, I reach in as I'm turning, and I pull out uh, my water, and I like, like just like squeeze it so it spurts out, and then it turns into a knife and like phases out towards them. All right. Okay. I, love that. I also okay. cast dancing lights at like the shadow. So whatever this thing is, oh, I make a ranged spell attack. So I have a plus ten to my attack. Uh, twenty-three. Twenty-three. All right. As you hurl your ice knife, it heads straight directly. 
but a shadow figure, and as you cast Dancing Lights, little balls of light begin swaying and hurling. Well, it just makes, like, four torch-sized lights, and I can make it into, like, a humanoid shape, too. Oh, okay. So that's just what I'm doing. Just a humanoid shape, like, in the middle of where the shadow is. Okay. As you do that in the middle of where the shadow is, the shadow completely disperses, and your dancing light figure is there, and the knife goes right through. Well, there's nothing actually there. There was nothing there. And once again, Shredder. Uh, let me get this straight. You hear an evil voice from a book written in infernal, a celestial, about your soul. Yes. I have dreams about an evil god of tyranny who's marked me for death. And you're hearing a fell voice in the air whisper your name menacingly and seeing ghosts. Matthias, are you seeing shit now, too? Oh, yeah, Matthias is with us. Yeah. Um, no. No, Good. I feel fine. At, At least one of us is in sight. Yeah. Did you do that, too? Yeah. Uh, 13. 20. 30, 20, 30, 20. Uh, You sense this is kind of how Matthias acts. You think there's nothing wrong? Uh... You think something's up with Matthias as his eyes are like shifting very quickly, like almost vibrating in his sockets back and forth. Very, very minor to notice, but you see it. Uh, I narrow my eyes and I say, What's wrong? You can tell me. I told you I'd keep you safe. Uh, I don't think I can. I don't really know how I'm supposed to describe it. You should probably get out of here, get somewhere perhaps safe. Let's get back to the mountain. Where's the hill? Yeah. And, and he begins like looking around more. Uh, up and around. Can I try and persuade him? No. Yeah. Of course. Okay, so what are you going to say to persuade him? Uh, well, as we're riding back, uh, right beside him, I say, there's something wrong. You should tell us. It's better we're all kept informed. Everyone knows what's going on. So there's no confusion, no tricks, no surprises. I told you I'd keep you safe. So you better tell me everything, or else well, how am I supposed to keep you safe? 23. All right, uh, that's fair. So, tell me, how do you really explain what tons and tons of minis of explosions are? How do you describe many explosions Pirates. that are happening? No, not quite. It's very, a lot of small ones, and they seem to be sparking everywhere around us. Is he talking about the stuff on the force field around us? Because we can see those two things. No, nope. it's just like literally all around is what he's describing it as. Do I get the sense that this is a magic? You get thing? the sense that this is what you've been detecting this whole time. Okay. Can I cast a spell on magic? <laughs> I do that. Um, so I, uh, as you take your hand you go, <laughs> and flash light up, uh, you still detect that it's around you, but yeah. in that place you cast it, it disappeared, and you can slowly kind of feel it growing back. Okay. Word or a charm. Uh, or an enchantment or something. Hmm. Ah. And Matthias kind of just looks more confused. Eventually you guys do approach the hill again, uh, back to the tunnel. And Matthias uh, gets off the horse and stands and rubs his head. <sighs> so, shall we go through the hall? Yeah, let, let's do it. I crawl through. I light a. I light all my torches. Or my priest. I have a, no. I don't have priest banner. I'm not playing the game. I'll go in first since I have dark. Oh, you have dark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Second. I'll pull down. You pull down. All right. I'll put my thighs ahead of me. Actually, I'll take the last. I'll take the the, the fast one. You bitch in the back. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure he doesn't get like dragged away and <laughs> murdered. I said I'd keep him safe. So, as you go in first, uh, you have no problems. You reach the hole and you start climbing down the ladder. You do the same. Uh, as Matthias and you go in, you begin crawling, and uh, as your first few steps in, you see a vine that slides under you and grabs and wraps around Matthias's ankle and pulls right past you. You have a moment to react. Deck save. How how big is this? Sorry, how big is this tunnel? Uh, it's like ten. No, it's like a five foot circle. Like you have to crawl to get through it. Okay. Uh like like how wide is it? Wide enough that you guys can slide through with enough force. Would you say? It's 
five foot. Yeah, it's five. It's a five foot circle. Okay. Uh, it's a five foot circle. Time. Deck save, or can I cast Mold Earth to block off the exit? You can cast Mold Earth. Okay, I cast Mold Earth to block off. Oh, no. I'm gonna do the deck save. I'm gonna try to do it. <laughs> something don't feel right there. Okay, something don't feel right there. All right. Deck saving throw? Yep, deck saving throw. I'm using luck. <laughs> what is that? You can use luck again. I don't wanna waste it. Okay, yeah, it's Matthias. I promise to keep him safe. So that's two luck points. Okay. Oh, that's much better. 11. No. Better than fucking three. <laughs> But I, ah, fuck, I can't, I can't do both, can I have to pick one? Yeah, you did, you picked your deck save. So, um. Failed, didn't I? As the vine pulls Matthias across from you, he scrides, uh, or slides across your body, he's about to get sucked right out of the tunnel. You quickly grab him by his, uh, his upper like, bicep arm, and you hold on nice and tight, and you're in a tug of war struggle right now. With this vine that is leading all the way to the forest that you can see. Pulling the thighs and you are barely holding on. Um, roll strength. Strength save for me. No. Uh, I use mold, I use mold earth. Use like, mold earth? To push half, up. It, half his body right now is through the tongue. Oh, it's through, through the, the entrance, yeah. Fuck! Alright, fine, I'll do strength. Like you're barely holding on. Not this one, not this one. That 20, yes. Nice. Oh, thank God. Wow. I said I keep you safe. <laughs> uh, as soon as he gets through, though. Wait, sorry. Do you think? Sorry. Um, what are you going to do? So you it's, it's just, if I could, do, if I was going to pull him in, as soon as I pull him in, I, I would cast Mulder to block it off. Uh, as you're in a struggle to keep Matthias uh, with you, you quickly grab your other arm and you're in a very awkward position in this tunnel. You're pulling and pulling. Uh, I'm much, calling out too. So. Yeah, you're straining your muscles and you go, <laughs> and the vine uh, detaches and slips off his ankle and he pulled in the tunnel with you. Then, yeah, then I just take him to do a quick, yeah, and, and I have Mulder. Cast Mold Earth and it quickly sealed up the exit and goes dark and you can't see anymore. I push him ahead of me. And the tunnel, I say, let's go now. Oh, that was terrifying. Yeah, I've definitely had better times too. <laughs> sure, let's go catch up. Is everything all right back there? Not really. <laughs> uh, you guys go down the road as well, and we'll travel down. You were two are the first uh, Aegis and yeah. Bork. You were the first to reach the base, um, in which you were just greeted to uh, another long tunnel. It's about 60 feet long, and it comes to an arch. It goes about 10 feet up, and it's this time it's rocky, rocky walls, rocky ceiling, and it smells very um, uh, like moss. And wet um, and musty too as yeah. well. Okay. I uh it's cold. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but after this, we're probably gonna have to make quick picks up that forest and figure some shit out. There's a vine came through all the way from the woods and tried to drag Matthias through the tunnel. I almost barely got him back in. What we can do is I can teleport us back to the city. If I can see the city. Because uh, I'm with Matthias at this point, I want nothing to do with that place. Alright, actually, I might not have to see it, but I might just have to know where it is. I don't know. No, teleport. Oh. Alright. I'm going to breathe for a moment. Damn, those clothes, man. I grab Matthias and I put like an arm around his shoulder, and I, and I, and I give him a hug, and I'm like, don't worry, man. I told you I'd keep you safe. Thank you, thank you, that, that means more than you know. So oh, the yeah. Destination Shrine Shoots just must be known to me and must be on the same plane of existence. Is this Teleportation Circle? Or? No, uh, Teleport. Oh, nice. I can teleport me and up to eight willing creatures. Okay, perfect. So, Alright, let's, uh, let's keep moving in, I guess. Let's find this bracelet we're looking for. Uh, you still currently can't see. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I say, uh, and I pull out my, my, uh, my pack. I have, a uh, which pack do I have? Explorer's back. I'll pull out a torch. I'll right. light it up. You pull and light a torch and then in the midst to the nice rocky cave. Uh, and as you all go through the tunnel, who's taking the lead? I will. I'll take the back <laughs> end again. Right. Matthias is ahead of you. Matthias, where I can see him, yeah. And I, I'm going to walk kind of backwards. Like, occasionally I'll just turn around and walk backwards. Like, I just keep a close eye. You know. 
All right. Uh, every time you look backwards as you walk, you start to see a shadow that whisks through the wall quickly. Um, as you approach the end there, um, Orc, you see that there's a, a wooden door with an iron framing that comes to a point at the top. And there's a small window with three bars in it. Yeah, uh, I'll look through the window first. All right. Yeah, you go look through the window with perception. How about an investigation? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 17. 17. Uh, as you look through the bars, you immediately are greeted to a vast cave area that's just full of statues in various positions. Some look aggressive as though they're tall and they're about to grab someone. Others look like they were about to unsheath a weapon. Um, and many others are in various positions of fear and terror. Uh, and then beyond that, you see a double door. Uh, it's also wooden with iron framing. Not the door he described, but the same size as it. Uh, and then you see something glowing between the same small windows through that door. Okay. Beyond. I just relayed that information to Robbie. Yeah. Okay. This place is getting worse and worse. We'll have to keep an eye out. Do you want me to go in alone? I can be invisible. <laughs> I'd rather you not go alone. We haven't been together long, but that's because you guys are the most powerful friends I've made, so I'd rather not lose you that easily. That's fully all head in then. Who mm-hmm. walks in first? I will. Again, you I'll turn the door knob and you open the door and go. <laughs> and the second that happens, torches along the walls begin to shoot up and light in flames. And, <laughs> and now you can see this hole is about it's about thirty foot circle all around and a very tall rocky dome that goes about fifty feet up. Uh, reveals a skylight that shoots uh, moonlight down into the center of the room. Everywhere is just stone statues and uh, people in different positions and all sorts of races. And uh, I feel like it might be a basilisk, basilisk or something here. Why do you get the impression of that? There are so many statues of people in like scared positions and stuff like that. Could be a Medusa. Yeah, that too. Hmm. Watch where you look. Yeah. Keep your eyes moving around. Don't don't fixate on anything. Yeah, I uh, step in. I put my hand on my thighs and I just grab a shirt because okay. it, it's still hard for me to see. So you gotta grab yeah. your hand. I just make sure I don't lose losing keep a firm grasp. You step in and immediately you hear the wisps of fate will test your mouth. Yeah, push your chest. Don't talk. <laughs> Am I the only one who hears this, or do these guys see you? step in, you hear this, and as the rest of you follow, you hear it as well. Watch your step. Last I checked, baskets don't talk. <laughs> you now have entered the room. We're currently at the beginning of the door. What moves do each of you make? This room is trapped. <laughs> I, uh, I look for traps. Oh. We're oh. going to start with Orc first. I'll use Mage Hand to just, like... Wander around throughout the room, kind of scuttling across the floor. All right, as it scuttles and moves across the floor, nothing happens. Every once in a while, t- touching a statue just to see what happens. Okay, as it touches statues and goes across the floor, nothing happens. Okay, I slowly and carefully follow its path. Okay, so which path did you take the hand in? Uh, it was mostly straight forward, sometimes going off to the side just to investigate certain things and statues, but mostly just straight forward. Okay. You start walking forward between the statues. Um, I'm keep, kind of keeping my eyes kind to the ground. And doing so, you make each step, you keep your eyes to the ground. It's silent. There's no noise in here other than slight drips of water from the cabin walls. Uh, you make it about halfway. You swear that you saw one of the statue's feet move as you walked past it. I I quietly mentioned this to the rest of the group. You all hear that? Just keep alert. Would we have noticed? You wouldn't have seen it in a very slight movement. Uh, It's not even confirmed that that's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. Um, After that, I mean, can I do an archon trick on the statues? Yeah. Don't look into any eyes. No, I won't. Don't worry. This being is 25. There is magic placed on all of the statues here. Uh, would I recognize them as stone? 
Walkers. Stone animated statues. Don't touch anything. I can add. I can add an animate office. So can I. <laughs> <laughs> but they're already animated, so. Yeah. Keep a distance. So do all of them seem seem to be animated? They all seem to be animated. They're alive. They're not moving. It's just maintain a quiet, peaceful interaction. Maybe if we don't touch them, they won't do anything. Alright. As you go your other half of the way, I'm gonna have you roll acrobatics. Fuck, they do do stuff anyway. Oi. Oh, uh, are you, is that okay to be counted as an 18? Yeah, that's mostly on 18. Okay, uh, that's a dirty 20. Dirty 20. Okay, um, Arden, I'm gonna have you go next. Roll two acrobatics checks for me. I'm gonna go next? You're gonna go next. Two acrobatics? Two acrobatics. Oh, good rolls. Fuck yeah. Acrobatics, uh, oh, plus one. So 18 and a dirty 20. Aegis, I'm gonna have you do the same. 18 and 10. 18 and 10, okay. Um, which path do you want to take? You can go forward, you can go around to the right side, or around to the left side. So I'll flank on the left. I'll flank on the left. Which side would you like to take? Go straight through. Straight through. With Matthias at your side. Okay. Well, I have a, like, directly in front of me. Right. I'm my hand on it. I'm like, kind of like leading the way. All right. You go through your second half, and uh, as you leave and bend through the statue, it gets tighter and tighter towards the door, making it more difficult. But you manage to squeeze through. You make it to the end. And as you turn around, you see that three of the statues are staring at you now. Okay. I'm just keeping my eyes down. I'm not, like, staring back or anything. Um, you can aim, I guess. Aegis, as you go next, and you flank to the left. Um, it's easy in the beginning. As you just bob and weave through them, you don't really have to do anything crazy. Towards the other half, though, they tighten up significantly. And uh, each time that you look back, you see that they're looking at you, the ones that you pass. And a couple of them seem to be coming closer. Uh, you all hear the <laughs> stone echo. Uh, as you approach the doorway, there are two that have their arms and legs crossed. And uh, you're really not sure how to get through it, but you take the chance and you quickly kind of hop sideways through it, putting your leg in and your body in there. Pushing the rest of your body through, and you make it to the door safely. Cool. Arden. I'm going to park this bitch like a Red Sea. <laughs> and like push forward. So yeah. uh, as you have Matthias in front of you, and you take your first steps, Matthias trips and slams into one of the statues. Are you fucking kidding me? He rolled acrobatics too. His first was a net uh, one. God uh, fucking damn it, Matthias. <sighs> I'm going to fight these stones, <laughs> you fucking idiot. No, I was holding really him. Can I not, like, try and hold him up? Ah, oh, fuck's sake. Really, I said I'd keep you safe. <laughs> I didn't say you so. could get me beat up for you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. No. Oh, you do? Or, wait, no. It, it I can be you. me and one other person. So, whatever. Immediately, you watch as the torch lights go out. You cannot see if your torch is still not lit. Matthias! Ah! And I just pick him up and I run. And you all see scrapings of stone uh, with your torch on. You see that the figures are beginning to move with each flash of the flame. They get closer and closer to you. You can both see that they're making their way, huddling around um, Arden and um, Matthias. Matthias. <laughs> what can I'll, I do? I'll yell out, leave him, he's a goner now. Save yourself. Uh, I'm going to... You guys bob and weave left and right. You're getting closer and closer to the door. You're past the halfway point now. Um, but significantly, the crowds are getting denser and denser, and you're not sure you're going to make it out. Fuck. I cast Tidal... No. Ah, fuck. I think tidal wave. There. I was thinking Tidal wave. At this point, Bork and Aegis, you can no longer see your friends, as they are completely covered by these stone statues. Nope. That's it. Fuck that. I cast Tidal wave. Uh... uh you conjure up a wave of water crashes down on an area within range of either 30 feet long and 10 feet wide and 10 feet tall. Each creature in that area must make a deck saving throw. And I'm doing it the thighs, like going outwards away from the thighs tonight, like behind us, not towards the door, but like back behind us, so like outwards. So like, like here's me and Matthias, here's all the 
zombie the zombie things. Yeah. And then the wave just is like this half circle behind me, just pushing back. Right now they're surrounding me. Oh, they're in the front. You made it just past the halfway point, so the ones ahead of you have surrounded you as well. Damn it, then full circle. I didn't want to hit these guys, but full circle. I'm pushing them all the way with tidal wave. Okay. But I'm holding tight to them. And uh, yeah, so they have to make deck saving throws. I'm I'm just gonna, for the sake of sakes, because there's a lot of them, I'm doing one deck save for all. Do percentage. Mmm, smart. Fuck you. <laughs> that was the wrong thing. That'd be 18. Uh, 18? Well, you can do two deck saves. Or, no, never mind. Alright, so 85% of them failed. Good. Uh, all it, They take 48 bludgeoning damage. 48 bludgeoning damage. Um, so, go ahead and roll that damage for me. With what? Roll oh. that damage. Uh, so that's 12 plus 10, so 22. And they're all knocked prone. Okay, all right. As you splash a massive uh, amount of water down on the thighs and yourself and it splashes all around, it pushes all the stones far enough. How far back are you pushing? Uh, it can be, it, it, it's area 30 feet long, so they're pushed 30 feet away. Alright, they all go blasting 30 feet back. You watch as uh, here and there, some of the stones break apart. And uh, anyone who did save takes half as much of that damage, but they're not, not, not. Um, okay, so the ones behind you, uh, so the ones in front of you and to the sides get pushed back, and they're all knocked prone, and some of them even break apart. Uh, you can now see each other again. Everyone can see each other. The ones behind you, most of them fell backwards, but a couple of them didn't. About 10 of them are still standing, and they're currently uh, scraping across the floor towards you. I push the thighs ahead, and I say, fucking run! <laughs> you all run and head to the doorway. You begin to see that the statues are standing up. You, you try to go through the doors. Um, as I like, as I reach the door, I cast Mold Earth again to make a half-circle wall around us in the door. It was a last-ditch effort of defense. All right, so he watches the rocky floor right in front of you. gets lunged up in the air and creates a half-circle wall. Uh, you can no longer see these statues. Um, Let's go through that fucking yeah. door. <laughs> <laughs> you open up that door and you race through, closing it behind you. Um, how long does that wall last? Can you keep it up? Or... Well, which one? Like, uh, mold the, wall, the wall, yeah, the mold earth. Wall. It's just instantaneous. Uh, it just says one action, 30 feet. So I get, oh, change the, for one hour. Okay. So as you guys get through, you quickly begin to hear the banging of rock on rock on the other side of the wall. It'll fade once I cast it again eventually, though. But just yeah. until then, it's... it's also looking this room for anything to burn the door with. All right, uh, you're approached to another tunnel that slants downwards. <clears throat> There's nothing here really to bar the door with. Uh, this is just kind of rocky floors, rocky walls and ceilings. But uh, you can hear those creatures, those stone creatures, banging on that wall fiercely. And there's many of them. There's a lot. That is where we'll leave off this session.